The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to our distance education lesson for today. I am Baboya Frederick, your biology teacher. Before we go into the contents of this lesson, I would like us to start by looking at the task which we had based on the context of the previous lesson. This assignment expected that we should do the following. From your understanding of plant and animal life cycles, do, do some animals actually undergo some form of alternation of generations in their life cycles? And if yes, which of course the answer is yes, please briefly describe one example. This implies that we were expected to describe any example of your choice of any organism in the animal kingdom that undergoes some form of alternation of generations. And if you had reflected and did findings as expected, you would have come up. There are several organisms, and I will just explain maybe one. Even if it is not the one that you did, there is no issue. But if you did this, it's still okay. If you did as such, if you use this one that I'm going to talk about, then you will have certain aspects that will look as follows. Because the response actually to this task, as we shall be seeing, will come integrally from this lesson. Therefore, the following that will be coming up in a short while, I will require you to actually take down very keen notes. Because as we progress, you will see those aspects highlighted. They will come up. If in your, the course of your assignment you didn't do what we are going to be doing now, it's still okay. Add what we are doing to what you did. Therefore, our reflection shall be continuous as we bring out the points from this lesson. Because we are continuing to talk about sexual reproduction in other organisms and the life cycles. And for this lesson, we shall be specific on metagenesis. And this actually is a form of alternation of generation in some animals. Therefore, link what you did in the assignment to this lesson proper, and you will extract those aspects from there and bring them out. But for us to realize this, we are going to follow this plan. We shall look at the objectives, share some previous knowledge, a real life situation, and of course, we'll carry out some few uh, lesson activities together with exercises, and then we shall end with an assignment. What therefore is expected of any learner who follows this lesson? If you are keen, and if you actually take down your notes, then by the end of this lesson, you will be expected that you should be able to describe in detail the stages of metagenesis in Obelia. Remember, I've chosen Obelia. It is not the only organism in the animal kingdom that undergoes some form of alternation of generation or that undergoes metagenesis. Therefore, based on the assignment, if you have taken a different organism, no worries about that. You will take certain concepts from Obelia and then you will align them with what you did. Therefore, we shall proceed with this lesson. But for us to understand this lesson better, we have already studied and identified a lot of features about the hydrozoa, especially when you were doing taxonomy. We are going to infer those aspects, maybe in passing. And in so doing, those will help you to understand this lesson better. 
And that brings us to our real life situation, which goes as follows. In an experiment, a group of students collected seawater containing tiny organisms having stalks, tentacles, and these organisms actually resembled sea anemones, but they were not sea anemones. Then, to identify them, they kept them in seawater in a laboratory and re-observed after one month. To their amazement, they discovered that several ciliated free swimming and attached level to uh, have been formed and so are actually attached to the base of the container in which they put that seawater. So they sought to know how this might have come about. They were wondering whether it was a reproductive process or whether there were some organisms that they didn't see at first. But based on our knowledge of metagenesis and the contents of this lesson, we shall reflect and see what might have happened in the course of their uh, investigation. From this uh, observe situation, we can observe that actually tiny sea anemone-like organisms with stalks, tentacles, had evolved and they had developed some form of cilia. Therefore, what actually has happened? Remember at the beginning they had free swimming organisms, but now so are attached. So these observations actually brings in a lot of curiosity and therefore in the course of this lesson much shall be explained and a lot shall be revealed as to what might have possibly happened. I would like us to look keenly at this group of organisms and then we should bring out one diagnostic feature of each. For A here, what is the name of this organism? Organism B, organism C. If we are to bring out diagnostic features, what can we say about this? Bring out what you are seeing, the visible features, not what you think here. In any case, you might have observed that this organism A here, which is Hydra, actually is the polyp. It has the polyp structure or the polyp form. And then, when you look at this organism B, it looks very much like the jellyfish. And what is the structure? You see that is the medusa structure, medusa form. And then this other organism here, this is Obelia. What structure does it have? Obelia has both the medusa and the polyp forms. You can see this one, which is colored here, the medusa, and this is the polyp. This, of course, is the feeding polyp. Therefore, we see that these organisms all belong to the same group, the same phylum. But while Hydra is strictly the polyp form and jellyfish strictly the medusa form, Obelia has both structures, the polyp and the medusa. We shall come to this in a short while as we proceed with the lesson. Then, for Hydra, the polyp body form actually has a tubular or cylindrical body. And then it is freshwater, uh, it's freshwater uh, related to other corals in the sea. So it means that it can also live in fresh water, not strictly in marine environments. And then it is radially symmetrical. And also, there's this presence of sting cells or sting tentacles in the, uh, in the hydra. And these also help to protect it from invaders, maybe uh, prey, uh, predators that will prey on it. And it also has a simple gut with only one opening. So you see that these are features that pertain to hydra. Some you may not see, but some you can see. These are features that pertain to Hydra. But for jellyfish, we see that it has the medusoid body form, like we can see. And then the body exhibits radial symmetry, meaning that you can cut it into two uh, similar sections from any direction. The two sides will be equal. That is what we call radial symmetry. And also it has an umbrella or oral arms, and it also has stinging tentacles. So we see that these tentacles have sting cells and they can sting and scare away their predator. And it has an internal cavity for digestion and also a simple opening which functions both as a mouth and as the anus. Then for Obelia, we see that it takes the two body forms, that's the polyp and the medusa forms. 
and also the polyp or what we, the, the polyp uh, form has the mouth which is surrounded by tentacles as we can see here that's the polyp uh, form which has uh, this is the mouth here surrounded by tentacles that we can see and also it has an incomplete digestive tract it means that it takes in food from one opening and the waste comes out from that same opening and it has a single opening which functions like the mouth and the anus food enters through that mouth and it goes into some form of a stomach which we call the manobrium and then it has four radial canals which distribute the food to the entire structure then having a clue of these features of these organisms which belong to hydrozoa or all of them are hydrozoans then it leads us to our focus which shall be obelia it is important for us to first look at the structure of obelia this is a review because we have done this obviously in taxonomy therefore this is the structure of obelia and you can see it clearly you can see the tentacles the hydrotheca, medusa, and all of these. You have done this. This is a review, and we shall be using each of these structures in the course of this lesson. To start with, when you look at Obelia, you can see this other part here. This is the medusa. One is medusa. Many, many are called medusa. So if we magnify it, you can see it look like this. And you see that this actually looks like jellyfish. And you see, when you look at this longer structure, it looks like hydra. But the hydra will have only this kind of polyp form. But the jellyfish will have only this kind. And then the obelia will have both. So these are the diagnostic features of these organisms. That is the structure of the medusa form, which is extracted from this polyp here. And then you can see that this is the hydrosis, hydrorhiza, where the colony is always attached to a whole fast or maybe to a solid structure. And then we have the hydrocolus. That is what is looking like a stem. And it has a tube inside. Remember we said that it has an incomplete uh, alimentary canal. And then we also have the hydrotheca. The hydrotheca is actually the medusoid form where medusa bought off. And when the medusa develop in this hydrotheca, they are released as independent organisms like this. So we are going to look keenly at what happens when they are released as such. So that is the medusa which is usually released. And you can see the position of the mouth. It is also here. You can see it here. And even if this one were also open, the tentacles are actually closed. The mouth is always, the manobrium is at the middle there. That is the structure. And we take keen interest here because we shall be using it in the course of this lesson. Then, if you were to draw and label the part of an obelia colony, this is what we look like you'll be expected to give a hand-drawn diagram that looks like this. And the parts remain the same like we had explained in the previous slide. Therefore, with this, what then is metagenesis? We have talked about alternation of generation in plants and in mosses and in others. Then, we are saying that there is some form of alternation of generation in animals. And our example that we are treating here is obedient. And this form of alternation of generation is what actually called metagenesis. Therefore, what is it? Why is it not a complete alternation of generation? Because actually, metagenesis is actually a phenomenon of alternation of generations, which is shown by some Nedarians, an example of which is the Obelia. This exhibits both polyps and medusa forms, like we have seen, and the polyps actually produce the medusas asexually. Take note, the medusae are produced asexually. And the medusae form the polyp sexually. So you see already the alternation of the methods of reproduction here. The medusae are formed asexually, but they produce the polyps sexually. So you can see already a change. We shall come into the details of this. And the diploid asexually producing generation alternates with the asexual haploid generation. We shall still come back to these details to see what actually takes place. Then, the colony is actually fixed. And this fixing, this uh, stable or st uh, static nature actually helps to facilitate asexual reproduction. And as we can find here, we see that feeding polyps are actually called gastrozoids. These are the, these ones that have uh, tentacles. 
They are the feeding polyps. So we call them the gastrozoids. And then uh, we also have the reproductive polyps, and we call them the gonozoids. And this cons consists of the medusa pods, like you find here. So you can see the gonozoids here. So these are the reproductive polyps, while these are the feeding polyps. But all of these are within a single organism. Therefore, why do we call Obelia a colony? It is called a colony because it contains hundreds of these body forms. Hundreds of polyps and hundreds of uh, all of these at a particular time. That's why it is called a colony. And to go ahead, we realize that the tentacles actually serve for defense and food capture. The life cycle actually begins with the release of the medusa from the gonozoids. We have seen the gonozoids, and this is actually is the beginning of the life cycle. When these medusae are released, in this colony, it only remains fixed like this as it is. But when it wants to reproduce, these medusae are released. And they could be, they are, the medusae are by, the, they are dimorphic, sexually dimorphic. You have separate medusae that are male and separate medusae that are female. But when they are released, they, they swim freely in water. But the two look the same. If you observe, you will see the difference between the male and the female medusae. They look the same, but they are released into the water and they swim freely. So you can have the male and the female medusae, several of them are released at a time. And they are moving at the mercy of the water currents. And when they are released, what happens? Each medusae has gonads. It has a mouth and it has a tentacle. So now you link the structure of this medusae to that of jellyfish. And you see the similarities. And the sperm and the eggs are actually produced and released to the water. Because the male produces the sperm and the female produces the eggs. So you see at this point, when the medusae are bought off and they go into the water, you see that the female will produce the egg, the male will produce the sperm. So at this juncture, you see that this situation now, sexual reproduction is coming in. But remember, these medusae were formed asexually. So the production of sperm and egg is already the start of sexual reproduction. And these can unite. When they happen to come together, the sperm will fertilize the egg and this will form the zygote. But take note that this is at the mercy of water currents. So there's a, it's just by chance. Because if the water carries the sperm away from the direction of the eggs, there will never be fertilization. But as nature will have it, they may be, they will be in an area where the water currents may not be so hard and there's a chance that they can meet. And then you realize that this kind of situation at times can be facilitated maybe by some form of a chemotactic kind of uh, attraction or also these may be released maybe at the edge of the water where the water currents is quite low and the water is almost like not very turbulent. So they, those are some, and there are many other uh, aspects that facilitate this fertilization, which you should have studied in taxonomy. Therefore, when these are formed, the zygote actually develops into what we call a blastula. And this blastula develops cilia. And when it develops the cilia, it now starts to swim. And when it is swimming, we, have, we call it a planula. So it rather now becomes a planular larva. So we see that from fertilization, which has occurred here, to the zygote, then it has developed. You see that there's cell division. Because normally when the zygote is formed, there's always cell division to increase the number of cells so that growth can occur. And we also see that the planula then will soon become attached to a solid surface at the under of the water where it was. So you see, it becomes attached. It moves around for a while and then becomes attached. You can see cilia here when it is free swimming and then it becomes attached. And remember, the colony is always attached to a hole fast in the water. So when this happens, you see that quickly there are a lot of changes that take place in the feeding polyp. And the polyp will grow and develop branches and also develop other polyps. So you see growth taking place here when it gets attached. This is the planula, it grows. You see that it is almost looking like the Obelia colony where it started from. And then finally, there is the formation of a new generation of polyps by asexual body, like we can find here. So if it had grown, like we saw in the previous slide, 
to this point here, if it grows to that point, it just needs time to continue to grow, and then you have a whole colony like this. Remember, this life cycle started from here. So you see that it has come back to a fully developed uh, Obelia colony with uh, the both polyps, the medusae and the feeding polyps. And the life cycle now looks like this. So you see that if you were to give a flow diagram of the life cycle of Obelia, this is what is expected. And this diagram is what we had explained previously step by step. So we have just combined it and put it here. And also, in some context, you can see it look like this. This one is quite clearer, so that you can see actually the shape, the structure of the, the, the medusa here. You can see it. So this is the male which produces the sperm, the female produces the egg. And if the takes place, see the zygote is formed and eventually becomes and develops into the larva, which is fixed, the plant is fixed here, start growing into a polyp, and you see it grow, increase in size, and you have a whole colony, which is here. So this is the life cycle. So you see that it goes in a cycle. And if you are now to divide it, you now see that you have the two kind of phases. And here you see that this is the asexual phase, the asexual reproduction, which is by budding. And then here, you also have the sexual phase. So this is the asexual and this is the sexual phase. So you now see the alternation between the sexual and the asexual phases of the reproductive cycle. And remember, if the sexual phase does not take place, Obelia will remain at this state. It will only remain like this. New ones will not come up. And if this one, fertilization doesn't occur, these Medusa will only remain like that, and maybe they will die, and no other new Obelia will come up. Therefore, these must alternate within a single life cycle, and that's what we call metagenesis. Then there are some terminology related to this, which we are expected to have a mastery of. We have heard of polymorphism. What actually could it be? This actually is a phenomenon in Obelia, which is represented by structurally and functionally different individuals. Structure and function. Remember at the beginning we talked about polyp, feeding polyp. Then we talked about medusa, reproductive. Structures are different, functions different. So that phenomenon is what we call polymorphism. And then we also have dimorphism. What could dimorphism be? In Obelia, the colony is represented only by two forms. That's the gastrozoids and the plastozoids. We have seen it here. And what we say as such is because the blastozoids or the gastrozoids, they look the same but they have different sexes. When you observe them, they are not different. But they, there's a the separate male and there's a separate female. So they are sexually dimorphic. So that is what we mean here by dimorphism. So we can see also trimorphism. And the Obelia colony actually is represented by three kinds of zoids. So you see dimorphic, sexually dimorphic. We are now looking at trimorphism. Three. So what is actually happening? Polyps or hydrants, which are nutritive. That's one or nutritive zoids. And then we also have, these are they that we can see as we have seen. And then we have the gonangia, or what we call the blastostil, which are the boating zoids, which we can see here. You can see them here. They are the boating zoids because they will produce the medusae. And then we also have the medusae, which are the sexual zoids. Therefore, you realize here that we have three different aspects. The hydrants, the gonangia, and the medusae. So this we describe Obelia as being trimorphic. You can see the three different structures. So it is trimorphic based on the structural forms of their body. Then, metagenesis, which we had started talking, actually gives a distinct alternation of generation that occurs in the life cycle or in the life history of Obelia. And in this situation, the Obelia colony is sexless. It doesn't have, it's neither male nor female, and it does not have any sex organs. And it only develops by repeated bonding. That's asexually what we had seen. And then the Medusae actually the, uh, are the ones that bought off and develop the gonads, and then fertilization of eggs may occur in water by chance. And cleavage of the zygote and growth 
takes place and leads to the Obelian colony, which we have seen, the asexual generation actually is dependent on and is alternated by the sexual generation. Obelian colony, therefore, is permanently fixed, but the plant of the lava are free swimming, even the medusae are also free swimming. But the non locomotive species of the colony, which we had started, you now see that in the course of the reproduction, the other aspects are movable. They move on their own. They are, not, they are able to carry out some locomotion. Therefore, you see the changes between the sessile nature and the locomotory state. With this, dear learners, I would like us to have a review again about our real life situation. We have said that in an experiment, a group of students collected seawater containing tiny organisms having stalks, tentacles, resembling sea animals. And they wanted to identify these organisms. So they kept them in seawater in the laboratory and re-observed after a month. But to their amazement, they discovered that several other organisms had developed. Maybe they counted 50 of these at the start. And then after one month, they were now counting about 150. And some of them were actually fixed. Then they were finding out what might have happened so that some, instead of all the organisms that we are moving, why is it that some of them are now fixed to the base of the container? We had also observed from this uh, uh, situation that tiny sea animal-like organisms with stalks and tentacles could evolve to ciliated free swimming and they become attached. So what actually is happening? Reflecting on our knowledge, which we have had just from this lesson, we can now infer with certitude that these organisms collected were actually containing some Obelia colonies. Other organisms might have been there, but Obelia colonies were there. Remember, it, the organisms were sea anemone like, like sea anemones. And sea anemones have which kind of body structure? They have actually the polyp structure. Then, the tentacles actually are located on the feeding polyps, and what, that's what we call the gastrozoids. And then the stalks are actually what we call the hydrocolors, which we have seen in the diagrams. And the reproductive polyps actually lack tentacles. The male and female medusae cannot be distinguished. That's uh, dimorphism, which we have seen. And then, the free swimming larvae are actually the planula, which later settle to the base and become fixed. Then the central planula now grows into the young body, and this grew eventually into a colony containing the feeding and the reproductive polyps. Then you realize that in the course of that day, one month where they were kept for observation, the sexual and the asexual phases actually had alternated to form a complete life cycle of that opelia. So that, in effect, was what happened within their period of investigation. I would like us to look at this exercise briefly. It says, which of the following statements are correct? It means more than one is correct. The first one, A, Obelia shows alternation of polyp and medusa forms in their life cycle. B, mesoglea is always seen between mesoderm and endoderm. C, hydra has the simplest form of nervous system in the form of nerve necks. And D, digestion in hydra is first extracellular, then intracellular. Together with what we have from this lesson and your knowledge from taxonomy, which of these statements do you think are biologically correct? Let's reflect together and see. Could it be A and B that are correct? A, C, and D that are correct? A, B, and C that are correct? Or all of these are correct? I will implore you to reread these statements again and reflect. And if you can't actually bring out with reasoning, it may be advisable that you review this lesson again. And if you do so, you will realize that the correct statements would include the following. B, A, C, and D would be the statements that are correct. Let's look at A here. What does it say? Obelia shows alternation of polyp and Medusa forms in their life cycle. True. That's what we have just seen. Then let's look at the next. What does it say? Hydra has the simplest form of nervous system in the form of nerve net. Yes, we have seen it when we are looking at the characteristics of Hydra. But remember, it also constitutes only of the polyp 
body form. Then we look at D. Digestion in Hydra is first extracellular and then intracellular, yes. Remember, it has only one opponent. First, it secretes and sends out some form of chemicals, which kill and start digestion of its prey, and then it takes it in, and that is what happens. You have this detail in taxonomy. Let's also look at this second exercise. Which of the following, which of the following statements is false about Obelia? The first we are looking at true statement, now we are looking at the one which is false. A. They have a complete digestive tract. B. The genus of invertebrate uh, marine animals found in all the Earth's oceans. C. They begin as small immobile animals comprising of stalks and tentacles. And D. They are also known as hydroid polyps. So reflect on what we have and then you see which of them is false. If you reflect properly, then you will, ref you will realize that actually for Obelia, they have a complete digestive tract. But this is lacking in the Medusae and it's also lacking in Hydra. So you see that A would be the response which is false. But the genius of that, if you go to the classification, B, C, and D are correct. But A is not correct because they have one opening. Food comes in, it digests, and then it comes out through the same opening. So it cannot be complete. Also, I would like us to look at this and do it at our private time. Which alternative or which alternatives constitute the missing stages? Represented here by A, B, and C of metagenesis in Obelia. We have budding, B, then we have gametic fusion, zygote, A, and then we have uh, A here. So this one will be C, the C here. Therefore, which of these statements could that be? Reflect on it, and then in our next lesson, we shall look more about this. And with this, dear learners, we have come to the end of this uh, lesson. You are expected to consult materials like this to come up with the responses because we consulted this in the preparation of this lesson. Our next lesson shall be on methods of birth control. See you in our next lesson. <laughs> Onotege majang matege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen Ngoni bana matege mut Ngoni lakiri watege ndong Yeso kina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne njubia yen